freedom of religion. Uh, this is a big deal. It's, uh, it's, as a matter of fact, as far as the amendments go, it's the first one mentioned. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. Uh, so the Founding Fathers felt strongly about this. All right, so <clears throat> let's get to it. Many people believe and believe wrongly that the First Amendment requires the separation of church and state. It does not. In fact, it was Thomas Jefferson um, who actually came up with this phrase, separation of church and state. And he was not at the Congress, or not in the Congress, which drafted the Bill of Rights, which is is uh, where the First Amendment is at. Um and he's arguing that the First Amendment creates a wall of separation. The reality is it does not. Um, but, but, it was never intended to create a wall of separation. But, that is, this, that is the view that the Supreme Court's uh, interpretations really have instigated or, or, or allowed for. Now, this wall of separation is really a mis misnomer. At be best, this wall of separation is a picket fence. Some things get through um, that seem to legislate on religion, and some things get rejected. Um, so, so it's certainly not a wall. At best, it's a picket fence. So <clears throat> let us move on and see what's going on here. There are actually two parts to the First Amendment that deal with um, religion. First part, Congress shall make no law respect, meaning the first part of the amendment that also deals with free speech. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. That's what the amendment says. I should have had a quote right over here as well. So there's this, this clause, there's actually two clauses in this clause. The establishment clause and the free exercise clause. Now when you think of establishment, what does that mean? To them, it meant something very specific, and so that really should be its meaning. The Establishment Clause meant simply that, that Congress could not establish, or we would say, rather today, we would say create a religion of their own. There could not be an official religion of the United States of America that you had to belong to, like in England, when uh, you had to belong to the Anglican or the Church of England. Uh, to have any government positions. There could not be that. You didn't have to violate your conscience, um, swear allegiance to some religion that you weren't part of so you could participate in government. So that is what the Establishment Clause is. The Free Exercise Clause was you should be able to do things that you want to do relative to, to your religious beliefs. Okay, so what we want to do um, is we want to take a look. We first want to take a look at the Free Exercise Clause. Um, and then we'll come back to the establishment clause. So, <clears throat> as I was saying um, about this picket fence, and there's another another way you can look at this. So that first bullet right there, the amalgamation of the rulings, their cumulative effect of the free exercise of free exercise clause, um, meaning you have the freedom to believe. That freedom to believe is unlimited. But the freedom to practice a belief can be limited. So you can believe whatever you want, um, according to the First Amendment. That's that's the idea for the free exercise clause. You can believe whatever you want. It does not mean that you can practice or take action based on that belief. So the Supreme Court has ruled freedom to believe, but not to take actions subversive to good order. So you can believe whatever you want. That's what they're saying right here. But if you take action, even based on religious principles, that that is perceived to be not as, that is perceived to be um, subversive public order, the courts will allow the government to legislate against that. So you can pretty much do as long as do whatever you like, so long as you don't harm another person. Is is kind of the uh, view. We've we've looked at that issue before. Um, so let's take let's take a look um, at a few examples and and. Uh, ask ourselves the question, how should the court rule? Mormons, or members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Latter Saints, once um, practiced uh, polygamy, um, that a man could have more than one wife. So is that subversive? And they genuinely, genuinely believe that this is what God wanted from them. Um, not, not all the Mormons practiced it. Um, some did. Uh, you had to be chosen by your leader. 
uh, to practice it. This was a time when uh, there were more females in religion, some men had been killed. Um, and so that's they, they believed that, that this is what God wanted and and it was a it was a, a tough thing for them to do, but but they did it. So they genuinely believe this is why I'm what I'm trying to get at. Um, so should they be able to do that? Jehovah's Witnesses, they believe that it is um, against uh, God's wishes that that uh, blood transfusions be taken, uh, that they receive blood transfusions. Um, so if you're if you're an adult within Jehovah's Witness and you choose not to have a, a blood transfusion, that's all well and fine. But what if you're an underage child? Will the courts um, force your parents to allow you to have this blood transfusion, even if you don't want it? Indian tribes using the drug peyote in religious ceremony. What should happen there? They've been using it for centuries. What should happen? Let's go back to the Jehovah's Witnesses for a moment. Let's suppose that you're involved in a DUI and you uh, hit a Jehovah's Witness and their life could be saved with a blood transfusion. Should you go to jail for manslaughter if they refuse, refuse to take a blood transfusion and die? Uh, all interesting questions. Um, what are you going to do? Um, how about some more? Seventh Day Adventist. Fired by an employer for refusal on religious grounds to work on Saturday. The Seventh Day Adventists believe that the proper day to worship is the Sabbath. Sabbath. Wow. Isn't that Sunday? Well, if you go back to Genesis, what you find was God hollowed the seventh day and blessed it and rested from his labors. If you take a look at the um, Spanish word for Saturday, it's sabado, meaning Sabbath. So Seventh-day Adventist believes the rest of Christianity gets it wrong because they're worshiping on the wrong day that the Bible clearly states um, that the uh, seventh day was the day you were supposed to rest from your labors and pay your devotions to the Most High. So now, if they, and that's one of the fundamental principles that the religion is based on. So now, if they don't take a, they if, if they refuse to work on Saturday and get fired from employers, should they be able to collect unemployment insurance? Or should they be able to collect unemployment insurance if they refuse the job that, that, that requires them to work on Saturday? The Amish sect uh, refuses, contrary to state law, to send its children to public schools past the 8th grade. Um, uh, most states require that you've got to send your kids to public school uh, up until they're 16. So should the Amish uh, be required to do that as well? Um, all very interesting questions. Um, so now let's go back and take a look at each one of these. What has the court said with respect to Mormons having more than one wife? They've said, no, can't do it. It's aversive to good order. Um, what have they said where Jehovah's Witnesses are concerned with the transfusion for an underage child? They said, nope, you got to give it to them. Child's not of age, you have to do it. So all these are instances where the, the court is going in and despite freedom of religion, dictating certain policy, um, based on governmental authority as opposed to religious authority. Indian tribes using priority in religious ceremonies. Uh, it just depends. It depends. It's not cut and dry. Uh, DUI. Should you go to jail? You're dang right you should go to jail. It's not their responsibility to violate their religious con conscience if you've been drinking and driving so, so you don't go to jail. You better believe you should go to jail. Um, Seventh-day Adventists. The court, um, the court will protect them from working on Saturday if they if they push their right and they will also be able to uh, collect un unemployment uh, benefits if they refuse to take a job that allows that requires them to work on Saturday and the Amish Amish sect um, they do not have to send their children to public school um, past the eighth grade the reality is they shouldn't send them past the the fifth grade um, but that's a whole other story. But there again. So you see what I mean by this really seems to be more like a picket fence rather than um, a, a wall of separation. Some things get through, some things don't. So here's a general principle, a statement of general principle. In practice, the simple principle of freedom of religion gets complicated and can lead the courts into giving, in effect, preference of members of one religion over another. And you see that in those preceding cases. All right, so when we return, we will move on to the Establishment Clause.